Everyone, the three questions, David Domena. There you go, man. David. David and I. David and I just spent an hour and 50 minutes talking sports. <laughs> I, just saved, I just saved everyone for not talking about it because, David, this is what I do every podcast. As soon as I hear anyone like sports, that's that's what the podcast becomes. So I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad we didn't record it because, you know, I lose everybody. Right? But, hey, David Domana is actually a teacher in Southern California. He's a STEAM teacher. Uh, he's, a, he's a Laker fan, which I grew up to, so we just spent a lot of time talking. But he also wrote... Uh, one of the chapters for what makes a great principal. I don't know if you know this, David, but I got to give you a little, a little shout out. Yeah, there it is. So, David, thanks for being on the podcast, man. Uh, thanks for writing for the book. I'm so, I'm like pumped. I We're going to be besties after this today. I feel this is it. I know. It's one of those things. You, you schedule an appointment to talk with someone, throw yourself out there, and then next thing you know, we're cross-country best friends now. Absolutely. I love it, man. I'm like, David's gonna be coming out to Orlando Magic right away. So can't, can't wait to, to have you here. So David, uh, typically what I do for the three questions, I always ask you, who's a teacher that inspired you? And I will get to that question. But I, I really want to focus on uh, what makes a great principal is, is out right now, or it's going to be out really quick. And uh, I want to hear about a great, the great principal you had the one that you wrote about. So if you can talk about um, the principle that you wrote about, why they inspired you, why you wrote about them, I would love to start off the conversation with that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so this was my this was my second year teaching. My first year, I, I was hired by a different principal. She was the assistant principal at the time, Leslie Burkhart. That's the, the lady I wrote about in the book. <clears throat> and um, she took over. It was kind of the principal that hired me was taking a step into another role. So they were, you know, they brought in a retired principal, kind of run the show. And she was underneath him for a while. And then uh, we were trying to figure out who's going to be the next principal. So I was just blown away by all the things that she was able to do. Um, and I was, again, my second year, I wasn't very aware of all the stuff that was happening in schools, you know, all the stuff that principals or admin were dealing with. But I was kind of blown away. I remember just all the stuff that she was able to get her arms around and do it really, really well. Um, not only running the school, because, you know, the retired guy came in and he was like the figurehead, but she was doing the work, let's right. be honest. Um, she stepped up into that. But then just the way she made the people feel. I, I'm a big relationships guy. And she made the kids feel great. She made the uh, the staff feel amazing. And, and George, I know we talked a little bit earlier about some difficult staff members. And we had those back then as well. I don't know um, what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> we plead the fifth on that. Um, yeah. So but she was, it was all every day was a new start. You know, you hear that a lot, but with her, it was truly that way. And I remember she gave me my, um, my evaluation because it was my second year. And so I was getting evaluated every year at that time. And, uh, your buddy, Dave Burgess came yeah. up and she asked me if I had ever read teach like a pirate. And I, I said, no, I didn't even heard of it back then. Um, and she's like, well, I feel like you wrote it because everything in there, you kind of like, yeah. that's what you're putting into place already. So, of course, after that, I had to run and go buy it and read the book. Now. And, and I told Dave that story, too. And he said, well, it's it's a good thing she didn't slide it to you and, like, recommend it for you because that would have been a different conversation, right? right. But she was she was impressed with what I was doing. And honestly, man, I had no idea what I was doing back then. Second year, you know, you're just kind of flying by the seat of your pants. But I just really appreciated the stability that she provides. Um, I'm sure you know people like this in your life where when they're around or when they're when they're scheduled to be somewhere and they show up, yep. everything kind of has like a sense of calm to it. Cause you're, Oh, it's going to be all right. Leslie's here, you know, and she's got it. Um, and she really offered that early in my career, but for the, this whole campus in general. I love it. So Leslie, yeah, love it. another yeah. one. I love it. So, you know, one of the things that you said, and we're going to talk, I'm going to talk about, cause you titled the, the chapter, the Goldilocks effect. And I'm going to ask you about that later. One of the things that you said, and I think it is so important, is we always talk about giving kids a fresh start every single day. But we don't really talk about that with the adults, right? We don't talk about that with administrators. And I think we need this. I, I will I'll tell you, and I, I don't know if I, I kind of touched about this on the book, but I felt like there was a point in my career where I had changed my perception of education, my goals in education, and really was aspiring to do something different than what I was doing currently. But I felt my administrators at the time 
no matter what, I was George five years ago. And I was that no matter what, I that was it. I was always going to be that and they would never give me that fresh start. So instead of waiting for them to do it for me, I went somewhere else. And then things changed. And you know, I, I said, look, hey, I, I guess I got to start over and make a first impression. So, you know, that's a really important thing is that, you know, people's career perspectives, career aspirations change throughout. And do we give them the fresh start that we ask for kids? So I, I love that. All right. So you're currently teaching uh, STEAM. And you, one of the things I really prided myself when, when or I was really proud of when you, when you heard, and I just love that you wrote for the book is really, you want to make an impact on as many kids as possible. And you have that opportunity to connect with um, kids th throughout your time in school. So when you think of a teacher who really inspired you, who's someone you think of and why? So this, <clears throat> this is a tough one for me because in my credential program, this is year nine for me teaching. So credential program wasn't that long ago, but um, in my credential program, they would ask that every class, they would say, yeah. you know, think of someone that inspired you and how could you be more like them? And how can you work to be that kind of educator, that kind of teacher? And, and initially I was like, well, nobody, I didn't have anybody. But then the more they asked it, I'm like, well, I got to really, that, that kind of sucks, you know, if I didn't have anyone. So I really had to sit and like, think about my childhood and my upbringing, even in the high school. And, and I, I brack in my brain, I still had nobody, man. I had nobody that I could point to and say, that was the one teacher that made me feel special for being at school or that found something in me that I was good at, you know, something, one of my strengths and kind of built upon that. Um, I feel like <clears throat> I was just on kind of on my own trying to navigate through, through school. And, you know, my parents pushed me, I had to do really well in school, but um, I don't feel like I had an educator that was there that, that kind of built me up that I could point to. So I asked that question quite a bit and I just feel like, man, oh, I wish there was someone. Yeah. I wish I had an answer, but um, there's just not that one person. But that I think is what drives me now that. to be more that way for the kids. Cause I'm not perfect by any means. And I don't always give kids a fresh start. You know, I have, I see kids once a week. So sometimes I remember, Hey, you're the kid spraying Axe body spray in my class last week, making everyone choke. We had to open up all the windows. That was you. So I'm not going to give you a fresh start this week. You know, I'm going <laughs> to kind of hold it against you this week. You have right. to do better this week. Um, but I, I still try to revert to that. Like, well, what are these kids going to remember? Are they going to remember right. me being the one that was, you know, scolding them the whole time? Or are they going to remember, like my wife and I were planning it, we're calling it an art installation for after spring break, where we're going to kind of transform the steam lab with flowers and the kids are going to do crafts. And then we're going to invite families to, to come walk through it. We did it in November too. We did like a glow gallery, glow in the dark type of art gallery, but we're going to try it again in the spring. I just want stuff like that for the kids yeah. to, to be able to hold on to remember from elementary school. You know, there's a quote, I, I can't say that I can't remember the name of the person who said it. And I remember that I do remember their last name is very hard to say. Uh, I think it's like, why is it? I think it's Yuri. And, and they, I've seen this quote shared a million times. Uh, it's something like every kid needs like one teacher who, you know, in their school experience that like is an advocate or a champion or something like that. I can't remember the exact quote. And I hate it. I hate the quote because I'm thinking like one out of like 12 years and how many teachers yeah. and you really like I get the premise of it. But like really, we, like we need to go out of our way to make that in, whether you teach them or not. There's I, there's so many stories of like kids who I've connected with um, who talk about like a teacher who never taught them, who'd see them in the hallway and just, you know, talk to them and, you know, go out of their way. But don't know if they were actually, and they're like, did I ever even have that person as a teacher? <laughs> and so like, it's really kind of thinking about how, are, you know, go out of our way to be that for as many kids as possible, because it just increases the likelihood that there's not stories like what you just told. Do you know what I mean? Right. And that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's becomes part of the problem is that like, what if we only, we aim for one and we get zero where I'd rather aim for 20 and get 10, you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. that, that's cool. so <clears throat> exactly. that, that, that resonates with me. All right. So I know you, you, you actually, you weren't like, you didn't like go to school, go to college, go right in education. You actually had experience doing some other work before you went in education. Is that correct? Yeah. So teaching is my second career. I, I started in, um, in retail warehousing. So I would run warehouses and I kind of liken it to like, I would see the kids as adults. Like I would see them right. on the grown up side of things because right. you're still trying to get them not doing their classwork, but doing their job. You got to get them doing their job. And, um, I hated it, man. It was in <laughs> right. I mean, the teachers talking about Sunday scaries. Now I was like, 
<laughs> I would get migraine headaches on <laughs> Sunday morning just thinking about going back on Monday. And I tell a story that I remember one night my wife dropped me off with my kids at work for some reason that day. But then it was going to be a late night. We didn't have a truck coming in and yeah. they had a flat tire. They broke down, whatever. They didn't get into our warehouse till mm-hmm. two in the morning. Yeah. So we loaded them up, got them out of there. I left the warehouse at 3.30 in the morning. My wife is there with the kids picking me up at 3.30 in the morning. Drove home. I was back in my office at 9 a.m. Wow. Like, for, for what? Like, just to make sure a pallet gets to Texas or something. It was ridiculous. So, wasn't a fan, but uh, well, brought glad, me here. So. I'm glad. We're all glad you're here. And I'm talking for the kids, too. <laughs> so, if you you start a little bit later, I think that's, uh, you know, interesting to me. But, if you know, if you can go back to that first year, what advice would you give to yourself? When you look back at when you started, you know, coming out from, a you know, this being your second career, what advice would you give to, you know, youngish David at that time? Yeah, youngish, that's right, youngish. Uh, um, so my, we talked earlier about the guy who hired me. He hired me as a fourth grade teacher. I tried, uh, I, I subbed for two years just to see if this was even something that would even take hold with me. And I loved it, you know, right away. So I knew it was kind of something I needed to push into. But fourth, fifth grade, those are some of the worst times I had subbing because those <laughs> kids really know how to push your buttons. And I, I tried kindergarten, I tried high school, I tried every grade level you could think of just to see where I wanted to kind of fall into and he offered me a fourth grade job and I thought oh no this is not what I wanted but you know you need a job at the time so um I jumped in and I was super naive I was just expecting all the kids to be reading at grade level math grade level writing you know like I had 35 kids that first year I had kids at the first grade level I had kids at eighth grade level everywhere in between and um I think my my biggest advice which is still something I struggle with now is just you hear that Q-tip, you know, quit taking it personally or don't take it personally or whatever. I wish I would have done more of that. And I, I, they're that first class, they're seniors now in the town that I teach in. And one of them, uh, one of the boys reached out to me earlier this year on an email, super amazing email that he sent me and just kind of really hit home with me because I thought I was a terrible first year teacher, you know, but he told me and I, that I, I, built something up in him. I recognize how, how strong he was in math and I helped him kind of flourish with that. And so I know that I did some things right, but right. I just wish I wouldn't take so much of it personally. I felt like, you know, if they didn't do their homework, that was an attack on me and right. my teaching. And this is my first year, man. I got to go. I got to, I got to make it in this, in this role or else I don't know what what's going to happen. So um, any kind of slight or if they didn't give me the ultimate effort, I took it personally. I wish I would have just spent a little more time with that class as people rather than pushing them so hard you know the uh one of the best pieces of advice we had a opening day convocation and it's funny because you and i are like brothers like we have the same life's interests and stuff like that so i actually started teaching grade four that was my first grade too oh wow <laughs> and I was, I was the same way i was getting really upset and then um uh we saw a speaker it was about my third year in and he said something i'll never forget he said never let an eight-year-old ruin your day and i was like <laughs> Oh my God. I am like crying because a kid called me poo poo head and I'm like, I can't handle it. And I'm like, seriously. And like, it was like a kind of a awakening moment, it really changed my perspective on things. And what I sort of realized is that a lot of the issues um, that are happening in my classroom with me and a student aren't with me and a student. It's with that kid and something else that's going on. I just happen to be the one that they trust enough to kind of, you know, like we're, we're often way harder on people we're close to than we are than strangers, right? Like yeah. we go our way to be nice to strangers and like, you know, yell at our family. So that's something I see often. So I, I love that. So kind of the same advice that I have too, right? Really? Cause I was the same way there too, but David, I'm, I'm so pumped that you're part of uh, what makes a great principal. I'm glad I didn't ask you because of a teacher, because you would have had nothing. So <laughs> I'm glad you got that one. So, uh, but Hey, everyone check out, uh, make sure you connect with David on socials down below. David, I can't wait to talk to you more. Uh, it has been a, such an awesome morning, you know, chat with you. So make sure you connect with David. Thanks for being here.